Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of my Pi 4 complete guide. In this video, I'll go over some of the operating systems available for the Raspberry Pi 4, show how to install all of them, and explain which ones are best for which purposes. In the previous video, I mentioned that the kit I'm using came with an OS image called Noobs, installed on an SD card, which can be inserted and booted right away. I'll start with that since it's what most starter kits come with, and it's a pretty popular method of installing some of the common operating systems. But later in the video, I'll show how to install other operating systems that aren't included with noobs, like Ubuntu, Manjaro, RetroPie, and Kali Linux. If you don't already have noobs installed on an SD card, or you just want to try something else, stick around for that, or, you know, just skip past this next section. Using noobs is really easy though, as you could probably guess from the name. Just pop the SD card into the Pi, connect your keyboard, mouse, monitor, and power supply, and then the Pi should just boot up. When it's done booting, you'll get a screen that looks like this, where you can pick which operating system you want to install. These options have changed over time, and I imagine they'll continue to change as alternatives appear. But the current options are, Raspbian, which is the officially supported operating system for the Raspberry Pi. This is a Linux distribution based on Debian, and you can see that this noobs installer actually has three options when it comes to installing Raspbian. There's Raspbian Full, which is the recommended option, and this contains the full Raspbian desktop environment with all of the additional applications. If you're just getting started with the Raspberry Pi, this is probably the one you'll want to install. Next, there's Raspbian Lite, which is still Raspbian at its core, but without the desktop environment, so none of the graphical interface stuff, or any of the additional applications. This is typically what you would use if you wanted to run the Pi without a monitor attached, like if you're running a server or local network application of some kind. If you're just getting started, you probably won't be using this one. And finally, a normal install of Raspbian, which has the desktop environment, so it has the graphical interface and everything, but it doesn't have all of the additional applications. If you already know what you want to use your Raspberry Pi for, like if you mostly want to use it for web browsing and you don't want to have to uninstall all of the additional applications, then this might be what you want to go with. But I do recommend checking out Raspbian full first, because who knows, maybe it has some applications that you're interested in. Aside from Raspbian, Noobs also has options for Libra Elec, which is an operating system that comes with the Kodi Media platform installed. So if you're looking to use your Pi 4 as a home media center, this is an option you might want to look into. I've talked more about Kodi in other videos, so I'll put a link in the description for that if you're interested. You can also install Kodi on top of other operating systems. You don't have to use Libra Elec, but this is just a streamlined way to do that. Noobs also has an option to install Laka, which is a gaming platform mostly for playing ROMs using different emulators. I did a video a while back where I reviewed Laka, Recalbox, and RetroPie, which are all similar gaming platforms, so I won't repeat all of that here. Instead, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for that as well. But Laka is pretty cool. The UI reminds me a lot of PlayStation, and it supports all kinds of different game console emulators. With the performance improvements of the Pi 4, they should all run really smoothly too. But for now, I'll be installing Raspbian Full to give you an idea of what the process is like and show Raspbian off a bit before we move on to other operating systems. All you have to do is click the checkbox next to Raspbian Full, hit install, and the noobs installer does everything for you. Raspbian boots up pretty quickly after the installation, and the first time you boot, you'll get this little welcome screen that asks you to configure some things. Then it tries to perform an update, which you really should do before you use the OS. This can take a while to install everything, and then it'll usually ask you to restart. But after that, the desktop is all ready to go, and you won't have to do that configuration process on future boots. I won't go over all of the applications that come with Raspbian. A lot of it is geared toward makers and people just getting into programming. So if that's you, then I definitely recommend trying everything out, doing some Googling as you go, and just experiment with things. 
That's really one of the nice things about the Raspberry Pi. It's all booted from an SD card, so if you mess something up experimenting with the software, you can just reflash an SD card and start over. It does come with Chromium, which is an open source version of Google's Chrome browser, so you can click on this icon and start browsing the web. It also has a few games pre-installed, including a custom version of Minecraft. Now, it is a special remake, it's not the complete game, and currently it only supports the creation mode, but it's still pretty cool as is, especially if you just want to build things. So yeah, that's Raspbian. Like I said, it is based on Debian Linux, so any software packages that support ARM processors should work. Now, Raspbian is a good distribution of Linux for getting started with the Raspberry Pi, but if you plan to use the Pi 4 as an actual desktop environment, I definitely recommend checking out some alternative operating systems, for instance Ubuntu. The main benefit of Ubuntu is that it's a really commonly used Linux distribution, so it's been well tested and has a lot of support for third-party software. Most applications that you might want to run on it will just run without much effort or setup. To install Ubuntu, we'll need to flash the SD card ourselves since it isn't an option from noobs. Luckily, Raspberry Pi released an application called Raspberry Pi Imager that makes it really easy to flash SD cards with different operating systems. You can get this from raspberrypi.org downloads, and when you run it, you'll see a screen that looks like this, where you can select the operating system you want. In this case, I'm selecting Ubuntu, and I'll specifically go with the 64-bit server edition of Ubuntu 20.04, which is the most recent as of this recording. And yes, we're installing the server edition instead of Ubuntu Desktop, but that's fine because you can install whatever desktop environment you want from the command line once you boot into it. And I'll show how to do that as well. So after the SD card is flashed, you just pop it into the Pi and power it up. When you finally get the command line prompt, you should run apt update to make sure all of the package lists are up to date, and then apt dist upgrade to actually install the upgrades. Now, if you wanna just use Ubuntu from the command line, you're good to go. But it would certainly be a lot nicer to have a graphical interface of some kind, so we need to install a desktop environment and there are a few good options here. There's the default desktop environment for Ubuntu, which is called GNOME. To install that, you just type apt install Ubuntu desktop and hit enter. It'll install a bunch of packages and require a reboot, but then you'll be greeted by the Ubuntu login screen. Ubuntu GNOME seems to work reasonably well on the four gigabyte version of the Pi, but you can still tell it's a little bit heavy. Raspberry Pi support for Ubuntu is still new, so I imagine it'll get better over time. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it'll be improved, but you may want to pick a lighter desktop environment if it's still too sluggish. For instance, Mate is a good alternative, which you can install by typing apt install Ubuntu Mate desktop. It's still Ubuntu underneath, just like the GNOME version, but with the Mate desktop environment, which running on the Pi feels much more responsive without being too minimal like Raspbian is. For the four gigabyte Pi, this definitely makes a solid user experience, and it's really easy to customize the UI to make it look and feel the way you want. But if what you want is an even lighter desktop environment, you should check out Zubuntu which you can install using apt install Zubuntu desktop. This one uses the XFCE desktop environment, which requires even less memory and CPU than Mate. On the four gigabyte Pi, this one runs perfectly and it should work much better on the one and two gigabyte Pis than either of the previous Ubuntu versions. But if you want to go even lighter and get the most out of your RAM and CPU, you may wanna check out Lubuntu, which you can install with apt install Lubuntu desktop. This one uses the LXDE desktop environment, which interestingly enough is the same one used by Raspbian, except here it's running on top of Ubuntu and without all of the Raspberry Pi branding or additional software. It's not the prettiest option, but the entire goal is to be really efficient and it certainly meets that goal. Plus you can customize it a bit and make it look a bit nicer. 
If you're still looking for a good general purpose desktop OS and don't like any of the Ubuntu variations, maybe you're not into Debian Linux at all. Another interesting option is Manjaro XFCE. Like the name suggests, this one uses the same XFCE desktop manager that Zubuntu uses, but runs on top of Arch Linux instead of Ubuntu Debian. And it is very well designed, fast loading, and personally, I think it looks and feels the best out of all of these options. I miss having the widespread Debian package support like Ubuntu and Raspbian have, so it's a little bit harder for me to get used to, but yeah, that UI is really nice looking and easy to use. To install Manjaro on an SD card, you just download the OS image from here, and I'll put a link in the description for that. Then open the Raspberry Pi imager utility from before. This time you select Use Custom instead of Ubuntu, and it'll let you navigate to the Manjaro image you just downloaded. Once it's done flashing, you're ready to boot it up. There is a bit of configuration that you need to do on the first boot, which is pretty common, but then you're good to go. You can use that same technique of writing custom image files to flash any Pi 4 OS to an SD card and then boot from there. For instance, you can flash the RetroPie OS if you're looking for a gaming alternative to Laka. Or you can flash Kali Linux if you're interested in an operating system filled with utilities for digital forensics and pen testing. I'll put links in the description for both of those. There are plenty of alternative operating systems out there that work with the Pi 4, almost too many to cover in one video. But hopefully this was enough to get you started with the Raspberry Pi 4. If you have any recommendations for other operating systems, or any tips that you think the rest of us might find interesting, let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to see any of these topics covered in more detail, be sure to leave that in the comments as well. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.